Hello, this is Ibrahim Nassar with Ozone Engineering. In this demo, we will be performing electrothermal analysis of a high-power, low-pass coaxial filter. The EM simulation will be performed using HFSS, and then the thermal simulation will be performed using the ANSYS ice pack tool, which is a CFD solver, all integrated inside the ANSYS electronic desktop. In this example, we will be setting up a two-way coupling between HFSS and ice pack to pass EM loss from HFSS to ice pack and pass back to the temperature distribution calculated by ice, ice pack to modify the material definitions in HFSS and then recalculate the EM loss. This approach should improve the accuracy of the electrothermal simulation. Here's the HFSS design of a coaxial filter. This coaxial filter was generated using the Synmatrix tool. We will be using in this demo 2025R1 and here's the response of the filter S11 and S21 which works as you see up to 5 gigahertz. Okay, let's expand this with the, the 3D modeler window. Okay, in order to enable uh, the feedback from the ice pack solver, we need to do basically two things. The first thing is that we need to do is to modify the material properties to have a thermal modifier. To do that, we select the aluminum uh, material, which is assigned to the coaxial inner part. So by right click on aluminum and select properties, then view edit. We need to check this box to for the thermal modifier. And here you select which the therm what properties need to change with this thermal modifier. And we can click here and select edit. So we can use this uh, expression and you can modify it as you, uh, if you want. You can use a quadratic form where you define the basic coefficients or the advanced one where you define the other properties here. You can also uh, use a temperature dependent data set where you import it and assign it to this material if you have it from measurements or you got it from a manufacturer. Okay, close this window. So we need to have a thermal modifier to adjust the bulk conductivity of aluminum. And we hit OK. The second thing that we need to change is the Teflon, which is uh, the inner uh, dielectric of this coax. So by right click on Teflon, properties, and similarly, you edit material will make sure that the thermal modifier is checked and here we can have the thermal modifier to modify the relative permittivity of the uh, teflon and we can also set it up to change the dielectric let's expand this window the dielectric loss tangent of the teflon and let's use the default uh, expression here <laughs> Okay, the second thing uh, that we need to do is to set the object, uh, the temperature, the object temperatures by right click on the design and select object temperature. Then we need to check this box to include the temperature dependence and we also need to check the box to enable the feedback from ice pack and here you can change the temperature if you need or we can just leave it at 22 degrees Celsius and we hit OK. Then let's solve the uh, HFSS design again since we modified the material so the solutions got invalidated. Okay, so it's doing the frequency sweep now, it's almost done. And now we have the results. So if we go to HFSS field fields calculator, we can calculate uh, the volume loss density and the surface loss density and those are uh, the those are the losses that will be passed into the HFS, uh, the ice pack solver so we need to do the uh, volume loss density over the teflon material which is the volume of outer dye it's okay and we integrate an eval and this is basically the the volume loss density if we clear that now we select the surface loss density, select the geometry, the surfaces of the cylinder eight, which is the aluminum, hit okay, integrate, eval, 
and this is the surface loss density calculated by HFSS. So we will see that those numbers will be passed into ice pack. Okay, we hit done here. You can as well uh, adjust the input power to this model. So here's just uh, assigned to port one to be one watt, but you can change that to uh, and adjust the calculations. And this is just a post-processing step. Okay, now we will need to create the ice pack design and simulate it. So to do that, we will use the automated workflow and the latest release of ANSYS. ANSYS. So by right click on the design and select create target design. We want to, the target design will be ice pack and we want to pass this last adaptive solution from HFSS. If we go to the ice pack, the tab, we will select force convection and let's have a flow speed of one along the positive C axis. And we hit OK. So now the ice pack uh, design got created and we can see that the EM losses got mapped properly. And we illustrated how to map this in another demo. Uh, so here we will just uh, go over uh, the design settings here. So opening one, the other boundary, the term, other thermal boundaries that we have here is an opening one from the top and opening two from the bottom. So if we open the, the one in the bottom, so it's an inlet. So there's a velocity of one as we selected when we created the uh, ice pack target design. And the one in the top is a pressure with ambient pressure. And we hit OK. We can now uh, generate the mesh by right click on mesh and select generate mesh. And now we can view the mesh by uh, over the cut plane here. Or we can select the geometry and select the object and we see the mesh. Okay, now let's uh, double check the setup that got created. So it's temperature, flow, and let's do uh, the flow regime to be turb turbulent. And let's do the radiation uh, model to be discrete ordinates, and we wanna include the gravity. Convergence, let's keep the, the defaults. And here, yes, number of iterations uh, can be adjusted. So let's give it uh, to the default of 100. Here's the solver settings. So the Z velocity is one. Radiation, let's keep the defaults and hit OK. And now uh, this is set for one-way simulation. So now to uh, to make a two-way simulation, uh, two-way coupling here, we have to right-click on setup one and select add two-way coupling. And here you can uh, adjust the number of iterations. Uh, the number of iterations here mean that the EM loss will be calculated by HFSS passed to ice pack. Ice pack will be used to simulate these losses and calculate the temperature distribution. That's an iteration. Second iteration will be that the temperature will be passed back into HFSS and HFSS will redo the calculation of the EM losses with the adjusted temperature and then pass back again uh, the, to ice back the EM losses. So let's just uh, to have it uh, quickly done here. So let's just keep the number of uh, coupling iterations to be two and the maximum ice back iterations per coupling list I'll also reduce it and keep it to 20. And we hit OK. So now we have everything done, so we can just right click on analysis and say analyze all. Okay, so now the simulation is done, so we can right click on setup one and look at the residual. And so this is uh, the, the, the residual over the number of iterations that were done. And if we go to profile, we can see that the EM loss that is passed is very similar to what we calculated in HFSS, and you can see uh, that it has been calculated multiple times because we have requested two iterations. So this was the first one time, and this is number coupling iteration number two. So we see that the has got been calculated another time. Okay, hit close. Now we can plot the temperature. By selecting the geometries and right click and uh, select plot fields, temperature, and let's plot it on the surfaces only. And this is the temperature distribution. We can also plot um, the, uh, the velocity. 
and let's plot it along one of the planes. So let's select the XC plane and we right click in the 3D modeler, select plot fields, velocity, and let's plot the velocity vectors. And let's keep the defaults. We can also go uh, to HFSS and look at the profile and verify that there was a temperature feedback. So if we open the profile, so we see here that the adaptive machine has been repeated with a feedback temperature from ice back. So that's all for this demo and thank you for watching.